Welcome to this last episode of Your Next Trade. So Santa delivered, as we can see on that chart, the S&P 500 is up 15% from the lows that we had at the end of October. And that is true across assets. So we had the help of lower inflation, central banks moving, very accommodative fiscal policy. And now we end up with markets up 20% for the S&P, 50% for the Nasdaq. And what is very true is people that were telling you to be selling when, it, when we were at 4,100 are now telling you that they are up 20% for the year and that they were calling this market to go up. So center delivered, social media delivered, we are all happy. So very well done to the bulls. They made good money. That was a tough year. Uh, and now we are going into 2024. So let's start with the week to date asset performance. What did we have? We had a risk on. So stocks up, S&P 2.5%, Russell 2000 up 5.5%. So very, very strong. True as well in Europe, 2.1%, 2.4%. So there has been a strong correlation between European markets and US markets. So if you look at the stocks 50, the stock 600 in Europe, they are roughly this up the same as the S&P 500 dollar weakening. Um, why? Because we had the uh, central bank, we get the FOMC on Wednesday, and it was pretty much clear that they were dovish and that the market should expect some cuts. So that's something we're going to be talking later on. Bitcoin's down 5% after like a tremendous rally, so uh, we should not be that much concerned. I mean, the uh, really the Bitcoins, the cryptos have been very strong for the year. Gold, WTI, copper, um, commodities. So that's going to be an interesting for, for 2024 with the uh, many questions asked about, you know, the weakness or not of the US dollar, are we going to see a bounce of the Chinese economy because the expectations are now very low? Uh, all of that makes some uh, good point for the commodities. So let's look at the week to date industry performance. So we get the S&P that is here. You can see many, many winners. Uh, so uh, the, the FANG of this world have not been doing so great versus the rest of the market. And the short uh, stocks, the, the most shorter stocks have been really strong, as we can see with the solar regional banking, banking doing pretty well uh, with the help of the central banks again. So very strong move on the week to date basis. If we jump into the week to date, real estate up 5.5 percent. Obviously, that is due to the U.S. 10 years, five years, two years, two years, 30 years, all the yields coming down aggressively. S&P still 2.4. That is obviously the same. Utilities, actually, you could have expect a, a better uh, performance from the utilities. IT more or less like the S&P. So what about going into uh, another asset class looking at the rates? So most interesting points is now we are at 3.9% on the US 10 year. So we are done 30 pips uh, for the week. So that's a very aggressive move. We are below the 4%. So as we see in this chart, we went from over the, the, the summer from 4% to 5%. Now we are back to this 39 to 4%. So very big move. If you look at the, the 10 versus the 2, we are still negative at 50 bips. I'm interested into this one, which is the Fed expectations to the Fed fund rates, which are these days at 5.33%. If you look at the December now, expectations are at 402, which means that you get a differential of 130. So 1.3% between December now and December next year. So that gives you roughly uh, five cuts going into next year. So that's very aggressive. Um, what the Fed has been saying on Wednesday that uh, the um, that they will cut by 75 bips, so three cuts. So there is a bit of a differential between this 130 and this 75, so uh, uh, a delta of 60 bips. So the, the market is expecting more cuts. When is the market expecting cuts to start? So 533, if you look at it, we are talking 514 roughly, so that will be from uh, April to May next year, uh, where uh, market participants are expecting the Fed to start to cut. What is interesting, if you, st if you look at the 
at when we started the rally, which is roughly end of uh, October, start of November uh, versus the last. And looking at the December, we went from 461 expectation at the end of December to 402. So we moved expectation from from uh, 460 to 402, which is 60 bips. So very aggressive. If you think about it, that means two and a half cut in a matter of six weeks. So very uh, big expectations. This is what the market is, is pricing now. If you look at the ECB, this is roughly the same expectations between 125 to 150 bips. So for 2024, we are expecting uh, central banks to cut. There are some issues here because, you know, obviously inflation could bounce. And there is another point which is very important for the US. We are going into election year and it's going to be harder for the, the Fed to be cutting rates because they could be seen as helping the Biden administration. So there's going to be a lot of noise. So either the Fed does it very quickly and earlier than expected, but the, the, um, uh, the more you get, the closer you get to the, uh, to the elections, the harder it's going to be for the Fed to be doing cuts. So really, this is something to, to watch for next year and early next year. What about the VIX? Roughly around 12%. So low level, that doesn't mean that it's going to go lower. There has been as always, when the uh, the perception of the economy is to get better, uh, um, the different assets will be rallying. Inflation has been dampened, as we have seen in 2023. Uh, most of the strategies, the winning strategies, have been to be selling volatility, selling straddle on the one day, one week, one month. And a lot of products um, have been uh, built and see, saw a lot of inflows going into this uh, uh, short call uh, strategy. So this is what we have for the VIX. Now I would like to go into, as always, into the um, the technical analysis, starting with the S&P futures. So um, I put here the weekly chart. As we can see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven weeks that we are up on the S&P. Historically, when you have such a strong move, you should see in the weeks after the market to, to carry on. So if we think about what has been the position, that is something that we discussed. We had the option expiry uh, yesterday. Uh, I thought that the 4600 uh, will give a big pin for the S&P, but because there was not much positioning after that, but what has been happening um, over the last uh, two to three years is obviously the the short term call, the zero date to expiry, um, have been pushing the market higher. And this week, that has been pretty much the case. So every single week, we every single day, we saw some calls that were bought and pushing the, the, the market higher. So that is the picture for the S&P. Very strong move. As I said, everyone was saying, you know, this is the end of the world here. And now everyone is bullish. For the Nasdaq, making new highs, very strong move. Russell actually is, is, is still, you know, struggling with this uh, resistance that we have around this level. So not making uh, a breakout yet. Um, and, and if you look at the Nasdaq versus the Russell, uh, we are still uh, in the same trend. What about the, the CL1? So this one is, is really interesting because um, it has been going into um, in, in a downtrend. We have, ex we have been explaining that the U.S. have been uh, uh, increasing their production massively over the last 12, 18 months, uh, despite the, um, the issues in Ukraine, uh, the tensions in the Middle East, and the Saudi is very keen on uh, reducing the production. So now, if you look at the positioning through the CTAs, through the uh, uh, commitment of traders, it's very, very light. Um, in other words, you don't need much for oil to go higher. And as well, if you look at seasonality very much around the 10th, 15th of, um, of, um, oh, I'm going to scan that, uh, of, uh, sorry, December, what you will see most of the time is a low in the, in the CL1. I'm not saying that we should be buying, but that's really one of the uh, top thing that is uh, in my, in my watches. What about copper? Copper, still the same, uh, trading sideways, not much of conviction. Gold, uh, we discussed before that we it made a climax. Since then, we are trading around the 2000 level. Uh, Euro dollar, uh, 110 now, 109, um, is not really making any breakout. 
This one, which is very interesting for this for this week, which is which is the dollar yen. So we are now at 142. We get the Bank of Japan. The decision is expected on Tuesday. Uh, they have been kind of um, uh, telling the market that the um, negative yields are done and dusted. Uh, so we need to have a confirmation for the uh, the yen to keep on strengthening. Many many stocks making new highs. So uh, JP Morgan. Uh, which is obviously a good leading in indicator of the US market, very, very strong. So the banks that was on Thursday were incredibly strong. We are talking Bank of America, JP Morgan. So uh, if you've been trading on, on Thursday, before the option expiry and just after the FOMC meeting, there was a huge divergence. So the market was roughly flattish on the day, but between the winners and the losers, huge divergence. So there is a combination of people closing their books going into uh, year end. I guess there will be uh, some pain that will come out in the next few weeks where we'll be hearing of, of people that have been really struggling. So that was for the TA. If we look now at what has been happening for the week, so this is for the S&P future. So here, this is as, as always the catalyst that I've been putting last week. Uh, so we discussed the central banks. This is the central banks. This is the move that we had from the FOMC. This is Powell saying, you know, uh, we think that the inflation is coming down nicely. Uh, GDP is still strong. Economy is still strong. Retail sales are still very strong. And the reason we are more dovish is because inflation is going to the direction that we are targeting, which is the 2%, even if it's going to be taking a bit of time. With that, you put the, the option expiry. As we know, um, option expiry means if you went above the 4,600 level, which was uh, for the cash, suddenly people have to chase, have to chase this rally. The market makers will have to to, uh, to rally. And what we've seen over this week is a record high of use of calls. So the market is very much driven by calls. That means you play the right hand side of the uh, distribution. It's working every single day. And as, work, as long as it works, uh, this is the play to make. So here, this is the option market and uh, tier one alpha, which used to be free. Now it's not free and it's uh, uh, offered by, I think, someone. Um, but uh, you see the size of the national here that has been here, the expiry, which was above 5 trillion on, on Friday. So very much uh, you need, we all need to understand, you know, where are the different option interest, um, open interest. So where's the gamma, where's the delta? And that's true on, not only for uh, indexes, but for stocks. And finally, that was for the dollar yen. So it's pretty much the differentials uh, between the US 10 years and the Japanese 10 years. Uh, US 10 years have been aggressively coming down. Expectations are for the Japanese 10 years to stay at least around this level. So that will be uh, something to uh, watch for the next few months. So what about the catalyst going into this week? Um, obviously, many, many market participants have been reducing positions. Uh, it's like, you know, the year is over. Don't expect like crazy moves. Um, why? Because we get the option expiry, we get Christmas, we get new end of the year. Uh, and very much, you know, now it's, it's about going into 2024. So we get still the Bank of Japan red decision that is on Tuesday. We get a lot of uh, housing number from the uh, NAHB, the building permits, existing home sales. Uh, we do have like some leading indicators. We do have like the PC as well. We get some other numbers with inflation with University of Michigan. We get as well some interesting earnings with uh, uh, Micron. We do have like FedEx as well. We got Nike. So some uh, some names that are still interesting for retail sales. Um, and finally, you know, what sh should we be looking? It's terms of seasonality. So as we can see for 2024, we have, uh, we have followed the pattern, the seasonal pattern. Uh, it's just because the reason the, the flows going into the market are exiting the market. Uh, if you look here, you can argue that there is another 2% on the S&P between now and the end of the year. If you look at early 2024, uh, there might be a case for a, a, a grind into uh, the expiry going into January. I don't think that there are that many positions to open. So it's going to be really uh, short, uh, uh, short dated 
options. But more interestingly, if you look at seasonality in January and February for the S&P, it's not really good. It's not that bad, but you know we are talking on average for the last 25 years, the market down 50 bips to 1% in January and February. So be careful on, on people saying, you know, you're going to have another firework. Um, and, and I'm looking at 2024. So in uh, mid-January, I will do a 2024 ID generation webinar. Uh, and that's something that we cover in 2020 because we, we are all getting older. Generally, what you see in an election year over the first six months of the year is not much of a move, a bit of volatility, not crazy volatility, but you see overall the market pretty much flattish and then it moves after the election or around the election. So uh, that is something to keep in mind. If you look at valuation, now the S&P is at 4,700, 4,800 uh, with the APS for 2023 at 230. If you put the EPS at 250 for next year, 250 times 20 times, that gives you 5,000. So again, um, just to put everything into perspective, I've been pretty wrong <laughs> on some macro analysis. I've been pretty lucky uh, to close my short. Uh, that was around the 20th of, of October. I didn't manage to do that much in the uh, move up. I'm now, as I've been saying, you know, short Europe because I think it's, it, it, it's complete uh, uh, craziness. I do have like some put spreads on the S&P. I've been pretty wrong on the timing on the XBI uh, and I'm not going to be, I'm still up on the year. So that's a good thing. Um, not crazy up, but still up. Um, and I want you to be careful of people telling you, you know, we are double digit. It was an easy one. Again, six weeks ago, no one or very few people. So we do have like some people on the Discord community that kept on being bullish. If you kept on being bullish and you come into the community just saying, you know, it's going to go higher, it's going to go higher, and you don't say something that makes sense, it's not interesting. So don't take it, don't take it personal. We have a community. We try to make points that are interesting. What we have been seeing over this week is actually people coming and say, I told you, I told you, and six weeks ago, they were never there. So this is what happens when the market is very extreme. Don't take it personal. It's all about, you know, trying to be making money. So what is it? This is it for me for, for this year. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you like what you see, you put a like, you put a comment. You can reach me. There is a Discord channel that is for free. Uh, we're still offering until the end of the year a 25% holiday discount on the 4x4 video series. And what I'm going to do, as I said, on the Saturday, the 13th of January at 2 p.m. London and 9 a.m. New York, I'm going to be doing an IG Generation 2024. So this is a webinar that I do every single year in January where I see, I try to recap 2023. I look at what could happen in 2024, looking for some ID generation. Um, and is, as always, I'm trying to put and to give you some my input um, and, and see, you know, uh, understand what is a professional uh, process. So I'm going to be putting the link probably later uh, and that would be a paid webinar that is a bit, uh, that is always something that I do. So that instead of doing free, uh, this is more advanced. So, and I'm putting a lot of time into this ID generation. So this is, this is it for me for the, for this year. Have a very good time. Merry Christmas. Uh, Happy New Year. Um, and I hope to see you back in 2024. Bye-bye everyone.